I'm going to talk about the power of instant healing. Yeah, you heard it right. And I'm going to show you from the mysteries of the kingdom, from the mysteries of the word of God, how this is possible. It's so simple, yet it's so profound. And I just think as believers, we miss this. We're going to dial in. So stay tuned because it's going to be really juicy. Be sure to invite your friends to listen to this podcast. It's going to be life changing. <laughs> Welcome to Mysterian Podcast. My name is Rini Medeiros, and I'm the founder of Mysterian Expressions. You can find us on the web at www.mysterian.tv to join our mailing list, to subscribe to notifications, and to get alerts for upcoming events and upcoming podcasts. You can also download my new mobile app in the app stores. It's free. Just type in Mysterian TV in the search of the Apple App Store or the Google Play Store and download. It's that simple. The word Mysterian comes from the Greek word mystery. As it states in Mark 4.11, the privilege of intimately knowing the mystery mystery of God's kingdom realm has been granted to you. The word mystery is Mysterian. I've got a powerful word for you right here, right now, from the mysteries of the kingdom of God. Let's dive deep into the mysteries of God's heart together. Enjoy. Hello, my beloved Mysterian ones. Oh, I'm so glad to be with you right here and right now. I know that I haven't done a podcast in a while, but today is going to be really, really awesome. Okay, so now, now that I've got your attention, the power of instant healing. This is really, really powerful stuff, guys. How many of you need healing in an area in your life? There's relationship healings, there's healing in your body, there's healing in your mind, and even coming out of this coronavirus, which has been crazy this past year. But you know what? We made it and God has taken care of us. So we're going to talk about the power of instant healing and how you can receive your healing through the mysteries of the kingdom. Yes, through the mysteries of the kingdom. You've been granted the mysteries of the kingdom. Mark 4 11 promises this. Jesus said the mysteries of the kingdom have been granted to you. Jesus spoke in parables to those that weren't ready to come into the mysteries of his heart and mysteries of his kingdom, but to his disciples, those that he was closest to, that's who he revealed the mysteries in clear, plain language. So if there is a parable that has like hidden mysteries in it, it's because our heart is not quite ready to receive it. And so the best thing that we can do to overcome that is to come closer and dial in to the heart of God and the mysteries of his heart. So that he can plainly reveal the secrets of his heart. This requires intimate relationship, guys. You know that, right? That the mysteries of God are revealed through the intimacy with Christ, through intimacy with Christ. That's how he just unveils his heart. I mean, really, if you think about it, you have a husband and a wife, they're intimate together, and there's just certain secrets that they share with each other that they don't share with anybody else. And those things are revealed in an intimate relationship where there's trust, where they not only love each other, but there's trust and they can share with honesty. So it's kind of like God sharing his heart with us with honesty and out of honesty, but there has to be that trust factor there. And God wants to trust us so much with the treasures and the mysteries of his kingdom. And the key is to come close to his heart. And I've got so much teaching on this, on how to come into union with God, to come into union with Christ. If you go to my website, go to Mysterian Mentor com and you will find the teachings that I have there that you can subscribe as a monthly Mysterian member and you will be able to have access to all of my teachings that will draw you closer into the heart of God, into the mysteries of the kingdom. We break down the mysteries of the kingdom. We do a lot of it in Hebraic study and it's just absolutely phenomenal. It's an adventure into the heart of God. So I encourage you to do that, MysterianMentoring.com. But let's get in to the power of instant healing. I'm going to read to you from James chapter 5 verses 16 through 19, just three scriptures, okay? So it says, this is the Passion Translation. For those of you that know me, I love the Passion Translation. I use many different translations to study. I'm just in love with the Passion Translation. So I'm going to read to you from the Passion Translation, verse 16 of James 5, confess and acknowledge how you have offended one another and then pray for one another to be instantly 
healed. Whoa, whoa, very, very powerful. For tremendous power is released through the passionate, heartfelt prayer of a godly believer. Now, we always take this scripture, when you read in the King James or whatnot, that the effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. You know, we always talk about, oh, you know, powerful prayers or whatever, but there's a prerequisite, and it's about confessing and acknowledging how you have offended one another. Now, there is so much offense going on in the body of Christ right now all kinds of tension. And, you know, and then there's unity too. There are those that are in full unity, but there's a lot of political tension. There's a lot of tension because people are cooped up with each other in their homes and a lot of things going on with families. And this right here is the most beautiful thing I have read today, waking up and just diving into the mysteries of God's heart. Confess and acknowledge how you have offended one another and then pray for one another to be instantly healed. Instant guys. Instant. You know why? Because you're coming to a place of humility. You're letting go and you are relinquishing offenses. There might be somebody that has offended you on Facebook. I mean, guys, come on. How many times does this happen? That we go jump on Facebook and something happens where somebody says something and we get really teed off and then we start responding back. The devil has just triggered you, (laughs) just triggered your emotions. And then you go in and then you start arguing back and forth. It's like, what benefit? is that. So it's so beneficial for you to be a peacemaker and speak words of kindness to people, even in the midst of dissension and craziness, because as you confess and acknowledge how you have offended one another, just apologize. Say, hey, Mary, I'm sorry I said this. I just apologize. Can we just start all over again? You'd be so surprised how people respond to that. And they will not only forgive you, but they will respect you. This is just such a huge respect gainer if you want to gain respect in the Christian community is to confess and acknowledge how you have offended one another and then pray for one another to be instantly healed for tremendous power. There's power there because it has the power to change people's hearts. Confession and acknowledging that you have offended and being the first, being the first to go to that person to say that you are sorry. It's going to require some humility. It's going to require some some courage on your part. But as you cross over that threshold, you will have saved a relationship and you will have gained respect as you use this as a way of life. This is a huge mystery in the kingdom. You know why? Because humility and honor is the currency. Love, humility, honor is the currency of heaven. And in order for us to operate in that currency, we have to exercise it here on the earth. And so what it does, is that it causes an open portal over your life from heaven to the earth so that love, respect, honor, humility crosses over from the heavenly realm into the earth realm over your life and heaven surrounds you and recognizes you and acknowledges you as one that is a peacemaker, one that is willing to humble yourself to bring restoration to relationships. So verse 17, Elijah was a man with human frailties, just like all of us, but he prayed and received supernatural answers. I believe because Elijah understood this, the power of confession, the power of acknowledgement, even though Elijah was an antagonizer. He antagonized the prophets of Baal. But when Jezebel intimidated him and then he was sitting under a tree and he was like, oh, I'm going to die. And he was just like really in a depressed state. I think he just dialed back a little bit and he realized even though his words were very forceful with the prophets of Baal, he just kind of regrouped. And I believe he understood this, confessing, acknowledging, and he may have offended (laughs) some people. Now you can imagine if Elijah has this personality that he's antagonistic. Don't you think that he would have offended a few people? And some of you might say, but Rini, I don't care if I offend the prophets of Baal. And maybe not. Maybe the prophets of Baal needed to be poked a little bit. They needed to be offended in a righteous way. But there could be people along the way that could have been offended alongside of that that didn't need to be offended. Because when you're forceful and you're powerful like that, and many of you that are preachers and you're just like fire and brimstone, there might be some people that that offend. It doesn't mean that you're 
doing it on purpose, but sometimes it's just good just to say I'm sorry and just to regroup and come back to a place of humility. I know it's just one of those things. If you're a fire and brimstone type of person, you're a fiery prophetic person, you just get really heated up. And then sometimes you need to dial back and say, hey, whoa, you know, <laughs> my fire was just like really burning and stay burning. You need to continue to burn. But what I'm talking about is thinking about confessing and acknowledging and where we have offended other people to dial it back and just say you're sorry. I do that all the time in my family. My family, okay, confession time here. My family knows that I'm the fiery one. If there's ever a confrontation that is needed, everybody's like, mommy, <laughs> they call me. And so they bring me to the forefront for a confrontation. You know, I don't try to be mean to people. I'm just very right, making sure that we are not ripped off, that we're not taken advantage of. Maybe part of that is just the mom inside of me, okay? It's funny because my family comes to me, you know, it's just really funny to watch. I could give you so many examples of the things that we've gone through as a family that would crack you up, but I'll spare you because it'll take too much time to go into those stories, but it it's hilarious. Some of the things that my family and I experience, especially when we go on vacation and conference comes up and there it is and everybody knows watch out because mommy <laughs> don't make mom mad kind of thing so anyways but I'm super nice guys I'm super nice and anyway we're gonna continue so Elijah was a man with human frailties just like all of us but he prayed and received supernatural answers he actually shut the heavens over the land so that there would be no rain for three and a half years now tell me guys do you have the power to shut the heavens for three and a half years one of the things that I do when we have a storm, we've got a tornado, I'm always prophesying to the elements, to the sky, and telling the storm to be still. Why? Because Jesus did. Why shouldn't we as Christians, why shouldn't we exercise that type of authority? Thank God to this day that our community has been protected and we're like right at the edge of Tornado Alley. And we've had plenty of storms and tornadoes whipping through here, but our neighborhood has been completely safe from all of that. Do I think it has anything to do with my prayers? I think so because I'm praying over my community. I'm a child of God living in the community that I live in. I think that my community is protected because I'm here. That's not being arrogant. That's just knowing who you are. That's knowing the power of your prayers. And that's what Elijah did. Elijah was a man with human frailties, just like all of us, but he prayed and received supernatural answers. He actually shut the heavens over the land so that there would be no rain for for three and a half years. And then he prayed again and the skies opened up over the land so that the rain came again and produced the harvest. So this dude had the power to shut the heavens and also open the heavens. You know what that tells me? That tells me that Elijah had a close relationship with God, that he knew that when he prayed, God would honor his prayers. What is this? This is called a relationship and the power of intimacy. This is where God opened up the secrets of his heart to Elijah. Elijah because Elijah was close to the heart of God. Even though he had mistakes, he had this fiery personality and sometimes he overdid it and he got a lot accomplished. It was because of his humility and because he was close to the heart of God. So finally, in verse 19, finally, as members of God's beloved family, we must go after the one who wanders from the truth and bring him back. Oh my goodness. Some of you might say, oh, I can't stand that person. They're so rude. They're just obnoxious. And what would church look like if we we just stopped for a minute to think about what the other person is going through, even if you just like can't stand them, right? And you reach out to them and set aside some of their faults because you've got faults too, right? Set aside some of their faults and approach them and say, hey, you know what? I just want to pray for you. Is everything okay? Is there anything that I could pray for you? And you'll probably shock the heck out of them because your fire and brimstone on your Facebook page or whatever, your Instagram, even your YouTube channel. And and they may not have seen you as like approachable. And that's the thing with us fiery people. Sometimes we can appear to be to other people as not approachable. But if you just take that step and you make yourself approachable and offer 
offer to pray for that person and to break down the walls of resistance. And you know what? They just might become your best friend. These are things that we have the power to do as Mysterian ones. Well, what is a Mysterian one? A Mysterian one is one who lives closely to the heart of God that lives in the mysteries of the kingdom. You're just not, you know, talking about it and preaching about it. You actually live it. You live in the mystery of God's heart. Well, if you're living in the mystery of God's heart, you will produce humility, you'll produce love, you'll produce honor, and that will be manifested in your life. That'll be something that is manifested in your life and that people will see that is something different about you. And they're going to be hungry for what you have, and they're going to be drawn to you, and it's going to give you the perfect opportunity, not only to evangelize, but to draw them in closer to the mysteries of the kingdom. So you can tell them all about Jesus. You can tell them all about the adventures that you're having in the kingdom of God. And they're just going to be left in awe because there's something different about you. You know why? Because you are otherworldly. You are an alien to this world, as the scripture says, and there's something different about you. And they're going to be drawn to you because they see the light of God inside of you through humility through honor, through respect, through exercising the currency of heaven. So as it says in verse 19, finally, as members of God's beloved family, we must go after the one who wanders from the truth and bring him back. We need to reel them back in, guys. We have prodigals that are in the kingdom, not only prodigals that are teenagers and young children, we have prodigals that are older adults that they may look on the outside like they're religious, but their hearts are far away from the Lord because they've been so turned off by Christians that are very standard and offish. And they're tired of that. And I hear about this all the time with my students, the things that they say about their churches that they say to me sometimes in my classes and the problems and the struggles that they're experiencing in their churches. And the reason why they come to me is so that they can operate in their giftings. They take my classes so they can operate and they can be free to express themselves. These are things that people are experiencing. That's real life stuff that I see from my students. So pastor, your people are coming to me and they're letting me know the struggles they're having in your church. Not something that you want to hear, but it's reality. And to be approachable, don't be like sitting on a pedestal and they can't reach you. And I understand. So let me flip back to the other side because pastors are like abused. They're totally abused many times by their people. They're taken advantage of. People call them for counseling and always taking, taking, taking. Be one that gives back, give back appreciation to your leader because in turn what happens it opens their heart and they'll just want to give you more so it goes both ways i understand my husband and i we pastored for seven years and i also understand from a prophetic standpoint of students coming to me all they desire is to operate in their gifts god's put a passion in their hearts they want to operate in their gifts and their calling and then they're stifled and they're squelched by their pastors because the pastors are afraid that these prophetic people are going to go wild in their church i mean it's just a crazy dynamic that i see from my point of view and just helping you to be more relatable to people. So in verse 20, for the one who restores the sinning believer back to God from the error of his way gives back to his soul life from the dead and covers over countless sins by their demonstration of love. This is instant healing. It's not only instant healing to confess and acknowledge how you offended one another, but when you go out and you reach out to someone that has maybe gone astray from the Lord, that you are actually bringing them back from the dead. You have resurrection power through humility, through honor, through respect, through love. The gifts of the Spirit operates through love, guys. We want, it's kind of like, okay, I understand. You prophetic people out there, I understand how you are (laughs) because I've trained thousands of you. I understand. And you're like the most dynamic people that walk on the face of the earth. You're just incredible. But there's this thing, I want to operate in resurrection power and raise people from the dead and all of that. But if you're not confessing and acknowledging how you've offended other people, because I assure you, you will offend somebody somewhere along the way, we all do, and to hone it back just a little bit and be in a place of humility and say, hey, I'm sorry, reach out to someone that may be obnoxious to you, but there's a reason why they're like that. You have to go back to the root of the cause of the problem of why they are the way that they are and to try to 
break the walls of resistance by you going out to them first and saying, hey, I just saw that you needed some help. Can I pray for you? And just be approachable to pray for them or to reach out and watch those walls of resistance fall and you will see instant healing, not only in that person, not only in your life, but even the whole relationship. My God, if we all did this, the church would just be so revolutionized by the power of God. But it requires each one of us to come into that place of mystery in the heart of God so that we can be the hands and the heart of God to bring humility, to bring that confession, to bring honor and respect back from the kingdom and into the earth. I hope that this has really helped you guys to make you think just a little bit of how we can kind of turn the tables a little bit and bring instant healing. The power of instant healing is inside of you through humility, through confession, through acknowledging, through reaching out to someone that could be a prodigal, somebody that has gone astray. You see that their walk is not quite there with the Lord and just bring them back in and you will have saved a life. You will have operated in resurrection power because it's inside of you guys. If you are saved and filled with the Holy Spirit. You've got resurrection power living inside of you. And so it is amazing to walk in the power of instant healing. Now, I just want to encourage you. I just want to invite you to come in to our Mysterian Mentoring Program. It's a monthly program. We have teaching that is amazing, that is going to draw you in to the heart of God and into the adventures of the mysteries of the kingdom. You're going to learn from Hebraic teaching and the breakdown of Hebraic break roots and a lot of my teachings. And then every month we've got like this mini mastermind that we do and it's incredible. So what will happen is my students will be in a hot seat and we begin to go into the obstacles. For instance, I'll take a student and from the beginning, I'll ask, what is it that is in your way that is preventing you from getting to your goal? And then they'll list the issue that is an obstacle and then they will list their goals and we'll map it out. I'll begin to ask questions. It's a collaborative time that we have together. So we do this every month month. So it's a mentoring session. It's collaborative. It's so much fun. And I just so would love for you to join us because you're going to be so blessed and such breakthrough will happen in your life in these Mysterian mentoring sessions that we have. So you have access to all of my teachings and then we get together once a month with our mini mastermind, which is incredible. So go to MysterianMentoring.com, sign up, and I would love to be able to see you before we have our next mini mastermind. It's just so much fun and so incredible. Guys, I hope that this has been helpful for you today. I hope that you're inspired. I hope that you're encouraged. I hope that just this mountain of peace has rested upon you. You are amazing. You are a Mysterian one. You are beloved from the Lord. And I want you to see that because even inside my mentoring classes, my coaching classes, my kingdom coaching classes, that you will see your identity in Christ as who you really are and really grow, not only in your faith, but in your intimacy, your walk with God, your prophetic perceptions. You'll be able to see different things in the realms of the kingdom, be able to interpret what you're seeing, go into the courts of heaven, and be able to go into a lot of different areas of your life through the mysteries of the kingdom and the principles of the courts of heaven. It's just amazing what we have at our disposal, guys. And I would love to be able to mentor you and to coach you into those realms. Thank you so much for joining me. Please go to our website, go to mysterian.tv to get on our mailing list, or you can go to mysterianmentoring.com and sign up for our mentoring program. I'll see you next time, guys. I love you. You are awesome. Let me know in the comments of this podcast how this has helped you, how this has blessed you. I would love to hear from you. Send me an email. Go to my website. Give me a testimony. I would love to hear from you. I love you guys. We'll talk to you next time. Thank you for listening to Mysterian Podcast, where every episode unveils another kingdom mystery and the secrets from the heart of Yahweh and are birthed into the heart of His beloved sons and daughters. Support this podcast by trading into the kingdom of heaven with your very best love offering. Go to www.give.mysterian.tv. Again, that's www.give.mysterian.tv.